Today I'll be talking about five investing tips from Warren Buffett and five of these tips I think are probably some of the best ones and are especially relevant right now because the stock market has been down um, a pretty significant amount year to date and we're getting very close to um, a bear market and we're pretty much in correction territory right now. Um, not necessarily that I, because I think that is a big deal, but because I think some of these tips are important and relevant to that. But anyways, before I get into it, if you haven't checked out my channel before, I talk about investing, the stock market, money, personal finance, things like that. So if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, definitely head over to my channel and check it out. <clears throat> Other than that, getting right into it. So the first tip Warren Buffett has is don't try and time the market. And this is something that I sort of preach on my channel as well, because I think there's a lot of people out there, and I'm sure you'll be in the comment sections that think they are particularly good at timing the market. And what Warren Buffett has to say on this is, you know, it's pretty much impossible to do. And he also notes that, um, you know, him and his investors and people he knows that are good at investing don't necessarily try to time the market, but they do try to buy when stocks go down. So he thinks that trying to time the market is kind of like a fool's play. Um, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and nor does it actually matter very much because, um, you know, the way he invests, which has been, you know, very, very successful, definitely one of the best investors of all time and probably the best investor that's currently living right now for sure. Um, you know, he just thinks it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to time the market because if you're investing in companies that you like and companies that you think are going to do very strong, it doesn't really matter how the overall market's doing because if your company is a good solid company, they'll still be doing pretty well, um, you know, regardless of if the market's up or down. And another thing he says about this is that in general, he believes that the US market will continue to go up. I know he quotes it and or talks about his own life as an example. He says, you know, he bought his first stock when he was 11 years old um, during World War II when the US was losing the war. And even all the way back then, he was kind of smart enough to realize that the US economy is pretty strong and solid. And he, uh, I don't know, I guess he thought that they were going to win the war, which they ended up doing. And he felt very confident in the stock market and the whole US economy. So he kept investing, you know, kind of when a lot of people were definitely pulling their money out of markets and probably freaking a whole lot out. I think that's pretty smart as an 11 year old kid. Um, another thing is don't be afraid to buy the dip. So Warren Buffett's second tip is when the stock market is going down, don't be afraid to consider buying. And why I think this is an important tip as well as um, a tip that's especially relevant right now is because typically when markets go down, especially like they have been in the past year or so, or at least a um, few months or so, especially this past week, um, a lot of people get a little scared and they're not sure when it's going to actually bottom out. And I think overall, and I'm Warren Buffett argues this as well, if you're just simply you know buying the dip rather than worrying about when it's going to bottom out, um, if you have at least some cash at hand, you can continue to buy this. And of course, for you to be able to buy any sort of dip, you have to have cash at hand. But um, in my opinion, that's just some basic personal finance stuff they have to go over. And if you know you don't have at least somewhat healthy personal finance, then um, you're probably not going to be a very successful investor at all. So his second tip, don't be afraid to buy the dip, I think is very, very important because a lot of people out there, when they see a stock that's been going down for the past couple of years or so, or maybe in the past five years, they are somewhat hesitant to buy that compared to a stock that's really been doing nothing but growing over the past five years. And um, logically, at first, that does make sense. And perhaps the company that's been growing for the past five years will continue to do so. But there's also a good chance that you might be able to make more money on the stock that's on the dip. And I don't think he's necessarily saying against or going against buying stocks while they're up. But I think what he's trying to say is that, like I said, you know, before you shouldn't be afraid to buy stocks when they're on the dip. So tip number three from Warren Buffett is keep it simple. And he's talking about this not only with investing, but also with business overall. Um, he, I, I think what he's trying to say by this, at least how I interpreted it, is in business, um, if you're not keeping it simple, if you're making things too confusing, um, if it's confusing you know, to people in your business and your company, it's probably going to be, as, could be confusing to the consumer. And if you don't have a simple business model, um, it, your business probably isn't going to work just simply because if you're getting confused about it, your employees are getting confused about it, the consumer probably is as well, and it's just kind of like a recipe for disaster. And this is just how I'm interpreting it. And I think in investing, when he says keep it simple, I think what he's trying to say by that is don't go too crazy with your portfolio. Um, don't, you know, there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of um, people out there trying to tell you one way or another to invest. And I mean, his simplest way of investing is just simply buying an index fund or just buying um, some sort of fund that simply mirrors like the S&P 500, Dow Jones, um, total stock market. And I think 
that's kind of what this whole tip leads up to is just buying the simplest form of um, stocks you can, which is just be simply buying a fund, not actually buying individual fund or individual stocks. And I think this part, um, keeping it simple is important and something that I personally need to work on because um, even though I do own quite a few stocks and my portfolio is very, very diversified, I think if I was able to simplify it a little bit and break it down and uh, not necessarily, um, I don't know, focus on too many different stocks, perhaps my portfolio would be a little bit better. I'm not trying to like say that my portfolio is bad or poor. I do pretty good. Um, you know, I've been even doing better when the stock market has been down. Um, but I think that is definitely one thing I need to work on in terms of investing. Next tip number four is start young. I mean, he said he started at the age of 11, which is obviously pretty young. And there's probably not a lot of us, you know, there's probably not any 11 year olds or 10 year olds really watching this video. So unfortunately for most of us, um, you know, we're probably at least, you know, in the adulthood age, just knowing um, the people who watch my videos and most people are from the ages of like 18 to 35. So in my opinion, even being that old is still relatively young. I think I followed this one pretty good. I'm 21. I started investing, you know, before the age of 18. So I think I've been doing pretty good with this tip and maybe you're somewhat timid to entering the market or something like that, or you think that you're too old, but um, I do agree with this tip, but I also think you can be in your forties or fifties and still start investing and still make a decent amount of money or even save up for the next 20, 15 years for retirement or whatever your plan is there. <coughs> So I think this tip is good, but if you are old, don't worry. I think there's still time to invest. You're probably going to live a pretty long life. Um, next tip and the last tip is um, he, he, he worded it a little bit differently than this, but basically don't believe in bad news. Um, so what he was saying in this regard is um, there's a lot of financial news out there. I mean, I'm sure if you even pop up um, your normal news station, there'll be some sort of financial section in it talking about um, the stock market, Dow Jones, S&P, whatever. And uh, of course, if you go over to like CNBC or Yahoo Finance or even YouTube, if you follow a lot of channels on here, including mine, um, even though I don't talk very much about the news, I do every now and then if I think it's a somewhat significant news because I do post every day, but um, his overall opinion on the news is just simply don't pay attention to the negative news. And he even goes out and says, don't pay attention to the day to day stuff because it's really not that important. And I definitely agree with him with that, especially the bad news, because I notice on my channel, um, I get a lot more views on videos when I'm talking about the stock market going down rather than talking about the stock market going up. Don't know why it is. I guess people are just more attracted or more interested in those kind of videos or probably more or not more often than not wondering why it's going down rather than why it's going up. I feel like when it's going up, um, it's pretty obvious it might not be a significant um, event or piece of news that happened, but because the market tends to go up in general, but um, I think when the market goes down, people are kind of looking for that one thing that caused it to go down. And a lot of times there might not necessarily be one specific thing. It's probably dozens or even hundreds of different little things that made a bunch of stocks go down. But um, I think that is very important for a handful of reasons. The first one being, like I said, um, there's a lot of news out there. Um, a lot of it is kind of bs -y. A lot of it's not necessarily important to your portfolio or even just your investing overall. And also um, a lot of this news out there, um, not only is it probably not important, but um, it's probably like just kind of like filler things. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, my channel, I only post every, I post every single day, but each video is only 10 minutes. If you're on CNBC or Yahoo Finance, like any other news station, you got to fill up like, you know, possibly 24 hours worth of content, 24, seven, 365 days a year. So that is going to be a lot of news that you're acting like is a lot more important than it actually is. But <clears throat> not necessarily trying to bash them or anything like that, but you know, it's going to be a lot of BS news. That's a lot of filler stuff that probably isn't very important. And the other reason I think you shouldn't necessarily worry about that news is because, you know, regardless of if there's, you know, some pretty minor news, but the example Warren Buffett made, like I was saying earlier, is that when he first started investing, um, the U S was in world war two, which was a long, long time ago. And, um, the U S was actually losing the war. So there was like a ridiculous amount of negative news around him, but he was able to kind of tune that stuff out and think, okay, the U S economy is probably going to be the strongest world economy for the next, like at least 50 years or so, you know, probably for my entire lifehood. And I still personally feel the same way. So even that day to day negative news probably isn't going to have a macro effect on the entire U S economy or even the world economy for that much. Now, one thing to note, I'm sure a lot of you guys are outside of the U S or 
I shouldn't say a lot of you guys, but I know there's a decent amount of people who watch my channel who aren't actually from the US, you know, maybe from Canada, you know, Germany, whatever. There's a bunch of random people I know from uh, Europe, a bunch of random countries, I should say. I know there's some Canadian people as well, but I mean, overall, regardless of where you're from, um, I'm, you know, if you feel relatively confident in the country, <clears throat> excuse me, in the country you're investing in, regardless of if it's the US or Canada or, you know, somewhere in Europe, it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, I really don't think that the US economy is going to go down significantly or like just totally collapse anytime soon. And even if it does dip, like, you know, it has a handful of times in the past 100 years or so, those dips are pretty short lived and really don't last very long and aren't very significant. So, I mean, for example, I know I posted a video about this um, a couple weeks ago, um, looking over the stock market crashes or um, recessions throughout history, um, comparing bear markets to bull markets. Bear markets only average at most like a year or two, while bull markets average like 10 years. So that short-term negative news as well as a short-term stock market going down probably won't matter very much. So anyways, that's really it for this video. Those were just five tips that Warren Buffett has and what I thought about them and a little bit about whether or not I really follow them or not. And I think I follow most of these. Really the main one I want to try to do a little bit more is keep it simple as well as don't be afraid to buy the dip because in my lifetime or at least my investing lifetime i really haven't gone through a significant dip yet but other than that guys really if this video um if you're new to my channel i talk about investing the stock market things like that so if you're interested in that kind of stuff definitely head over to my channel and consider subscribing and other than that guys leave a comment in the comment section what's one of these tips you like the most and let me know what you think about that but other than that guys thanks for watching